the show is called Pam and it's about a on the surface it's about a 55 year old woman from Settle Yorkshire uh, who's recently bereaved and she's sort of in that bereavement figured out realized that she's never really found her thing like her form of expression and her um I guess sort of wider largeness and purpose mm. and um so she comes to London and she books spots and open mic nights and theatre spaces to essentially experiment in front of the audience for an hour um and it, but it got to the point where we had this sort of character show where uh I think after one gig Jemima sat me down and she was like you know this is this is not <laughs> about Pam and I was like oh, of course it is of course it's about Pam she was like it's about you and your own um relationship with your art mm. and uh, so from there we and can you tell us a little bit the journey of making the show because you mm. you've been cooking this for quite some time right so where where have you done it was uh, you scratched yeah. you did open mics uh, how did the collaboration yeah the making the process of making the state different stages of it um so originally when it was when i was working on it as a, as a comedy piece and i was gigging it i was developing it as alongside or as part of um soho theater young company um in their comedy uh what's it called comedy plus lab comedy lab plus um and so with amazing people like Alison Thea Scott as a kind of guide and that really was a wonderful experience in terms of like getting into gigging and actually knowing how comedy worked and then when I was started developing it as a larger show I kind of I began to see it more as okay this show is the mechanism for me to learn how to have a craft and like have a have an artistic process And, I'm, and I can kind of make it what I want it to be. I can, I can make my craft what I want it to be. So I sort of formed more of a routine of like, okay, I'm going to get up at 7.30 and I'm going to dance for half an hour. <laughs> and then I'm going to see what that does for my writing. And I ended up writing like three dances into the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a dancer. Um, and then it got to the point which was last summer Edinburgh festival so I went up with and did some gigging around there in the different alternative comedy nights and then tram shed uh, generator event um, which was wonderful because you gave us some great space and we presented 20 minutes of this kind of what was by then emerging as these these parallel narratives and we were kind of just figuring out how they were weaving together um and that was a really wonderful night to do it at because it felt very um supportive and free in terms of what we could present um yeah i think yeah that was also i think maybe the time where the show began to slightly shift from, or we began to get two versions. So we began to develop the more theatrical version of the show and then the more like alternative comedy version of the show. Mm. Um, I think that's something that's so nice about this show is that it has these like this duality to it um, because there's, there's stuff that you can do while gigging that you can't do in theater in a rehearsal room. And there's stuff you can do in a rehearsal room that, aren't, that isn't possible to develop in a gig mm -hmm. setting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I learned about Tramshed through the theatre company that I work part-time for um, called Coney, who did a project um, with um, Brit. And um, I, I then wrote to, um, I originally wrote to Chris and Jeremy, and then got put in touch with Andre when I was contacting Spaces because we were, you know doing scratch nights and trying to develop the show but it was largely in my living room <laughs> which was very small and we didn't have a lot of uh making space and the show <laughs> as i've sort of touched on 
is it's kind of grown into this very physical piece which yeah. has a lot of movement in it and is about kind of having the space to experiment and the irony is like, I really didn't have the space to experiment so um Andre invited us to to have some space when we needed it which was really amazing um to work together and work on those more kind of physical parts of it and that's when we had the original scratch performance in september 2019 and then we applied for the residency scheme for 2020 and um basically bef we were gonna go into three weeks of our first like three week rehearsal period with a rehearsal draft of the script like a week after lockdown started uh, and we were going to perform the first full length performance of the show on the 4th of April. Mm -hmm. uh, so this period has been, <laughs> it's been a bit of, I think because we've been working on it for so long there was a real momentum to get going <laughs> and we like yeah. had this rehearsal draft of the script that we were really excited by. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's just a case of kind of figuring out how we can, you know, continue to work with the tram show because we love working with you and develop the show in a way that's best for the show.